You smell that? Smells kind of like mucoid plaque. But is mucoid plaque real? Let's find out. So in this video, we're going to explore the concept of mucoid plaque. We're gonna look at some case studies, look at some definitions, and by the time you get done with this video, you will know whether mucoid plaque is real if it's not or if maybe there's a better term that could be used for this phenomenon i'm professor spira and i've practiced something called the mucusless diet healing system for over 18 years i've helped thousands and thousands of people yeah. eliminate pounds and pounds of waste from their intestines from their colon from their gut things that did not need to be in their body and today we are going to talk about mucoid plaque. This concept, this phenomenon, but is it real? A lot of medical professionals and doctors say that there is no such thing as mucoid plaque. It's a fiction, it's buffoonery, it's idiocy, They're just making it up. This thing is only made up to help people sell supplements and sell cleanses. Well, let me tell you a personal story. So, when I started practicing the mucus's diet, way on back 2002, I was a sophomore at the University of Cincinnati College Conservatory of Music, and I lived in the dormitory. And one day, I was preparing my enema, so my routine would be get some lemons from the cafe and I had have some distilled water up in my room and I would juice the lemons and I would juice the lemons rind and all using my good old-fashioned Jacqueline juicer old trusty and prepare my enema and if you're interested in learning a little bit more about lemon juice and distilled water enemas check out my video on that that you can find on the channel the quintessential video on how to do lemon juice and distilled water enemas. But I would prepare my enema and I went down to a public bathroom that could lock. Because you're in a dorm, there's not a whole lot of places that you can go for privacy if you want some quality privacy for a bathroom break. But there was one place where I could lock the door. Now, of course, right outside this place was a uh, 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 was a game room so there was like pool tables and that kind of stuff out there but anyway so on this fateful day I had been doing animas for a couple weeks and you know the first few were kind of you know they're kind of rough and figuring out what is this all about and but finally a couple weeks in I'd been practicing the mucus's diet so I just been eating fruits mostly fruits and green leafy vegetables a few other things transitionally if you want to understand a little bit more about that check out mucus's diet healing system book on this one day i went into the bathroom you know locked the door there was people out there playing pool in the pool table and stuff and you know and usually every day at some point somebody knocks on the door <laughs> and then you know i'm in here as I'm, I'm laying down like i'm in here this time, this fateful day, I, you know, got the water in, was held it for you know five or six minutes, and when I went to release it, I released it, and I felt it was like all this stuff that I didn't know was in there came out all of a sudden. Just all of this, just like felt like pounds of stuff that just kept just kept coming out of me, and I'm like, what is going on? So I then go like okay look in the in the toilet like I, I always like to inspect the elimination you know for science purposes and so I look down and I see a toilet bowl filled of black strings big thick rubbery black strings and I'm like what on earth is this cuz Arnold Eric didn't talk about big black strings 
Brother Air didn't warn me about black strings. Had no clue what this was. I'd never heard of the term mucoid plaque. I didn't really know what I was in for. I wasn't ready for that. And the smell came up and it smelled, if, if death had a smell, it would be that. The, this is the most god awful smell I'd ever had in my life and it just, it just oozed up. And I was just like, I was just dumbfounded, had no clue what was going on. What's that smell? What's that smell? <laughs> if all, if one thing, if I could go back in time, all of the various crazy eliminations that I've had over the years, I would have a camera every, <laughs> I would have had a camera at every anima obsession and I would have took copious pictures because I could dazzle the internet with all of the eliminations that I had and unfortunately I wasn't that forward thinking to be able to actually take pictures of all this stuff because I didn't know it was I didn't at that time I had no clue that was even coming I didn't know what that was and I remember I called brother air I'm like after it I'm like dude what's what's going on man I just all this black slime and sludge and stuff can't just came out of me in the enema he was like He's like, yeah, man, that's, that's what it's supposed to do. I mean, he was just so, so nonchalant about it. And I'm like, kind of like, like, what, what is this? I want some answers. What, what is this stuff, man? It was like slimy. And he's like, that's mucus, man. What? No, but it's like, it wasn't just mucus. It was like ropes of, of slime and it was nasty and it smelled terrible. He's like, yeah, man talk to you later <laughs> I mean he just he couldn't care less it was like it was just another day at the office for and I didn't know that at that point now for me it's yeah you hear case after case after case after case people eliminate this stuff and do so without the supplements without the Ben and I clays without all that stuff I that's what I did I didn't even know about that stuff I would I wasn't into the herbs wasn't into Ben and I clay I wasn't into no cleanses I was into juicing fasting lemon juice and distilled water enemas mucus free diet that was it and all of my most major eliminations came from systematically using those elements that really kind of changed my life just seeing that stuff like this is real these eliminations are real there's no doctor there's nobody with any amount of education that could tell me that that fetid smelly nasty putrid mess was supposed to be in my body that my body was benefiting from this black tar like jelly slime no one on earth could t convince me of that. There's no way that stuff belonged in my body. And I thank the universe for giving me the tools and the inspiration and the information to get that stuff out of me. Because the more of that stuff I got out, the better and better I felt over time. So let's look at a few definitions of mucoid plaque. Let's, let's put some words to this concept and we can interrogate the concept a little bit and see if it is the best terminology for what we're talking about. Maybe there's something better. First, I wanna take a look in my book, Spirit Speaks. This is a lifestyle book, it's not a di diet book. Spirit Speaks Dialogues and Essays in the Mucus's Diet Healing System. I have a whole section in the back of vocabulary words and one of those vocabulary words and this is my definition of mucoid plaque it's a term used to describe an accumulation of rubbery rope like white yellowish or green gel like mucus film that covers the walls of the gastrointestinal tract such plaque is derived from uneliminated mucus and pus forming foods combined with dead tissues or cells that ferment and putrefy in the digestive tract. Pleasant. So that's my definition. One follow-up to that, I, I mentioned it in one of the notes of the annotated, revised, and edited mucus's diet healing system. Eric talks about 
people eliminating pounds and pounds of fecal matter and waste out of their system and people sometimes you know 10 pounds 15 pounds and it can be hard for some people to believe that at first until you start to detox or eliminate go down this type of path you really really have no clue what lies in weight <laughs> in your colon and intestines you we don't we do not know i didn't know i didn't know that there was that black slime in me no one told me i didn't know there wasn't then all this stuff wasn't on the internet yet so no one was talking about it like that later in the book eric will discuss cases where he helped people eliminate a lot more than 10 pounds of fecal matter from the bowels also, since the time of Eret, other nat naturopaths have observed and documented the elimination of pounds of, quote, mucoid plaque or rubber-like strings of rotting mucus found in the intestines, feces, decades-old feces stones, and other toxemias. So before we go any further, if you would like to eliminate mucus from your body, I have five free recipes that can help you loosen and broom out some of this mucus that is in your system. All you gotta do, just go down below, click that link, and you'll be able to download three PDFs, and one of those PDFs is five free recipes. There's also a list of my favorite mucus free foods, as well as an introduction to the mucus's diet and menu planning. If you don't have it yet, please don't delay. Go down right now, click that link, get these recipes so there's a quote by Richard Anderson who is said to have coined the term mucoid plaque he says that the intestines can store a vast amount of partially digested putrefying matter as well as drugs and other toxic chemicals for decades even now that's something that professor Arnold Eret says in the mucus diet healing system back in 1920 some intestines, when autopsied, have weighed up to 40 pounds and were distended to a diameter of 12 inches with only a pencil-thin channel through which the feces could move. So imagine that. Imagine a tube. And there's so much obstruction. Like if you had, think of, think of, your, of a kitchen pipe and if for years there was all this grease and all this waste and all this mess that started to build up in that pipe and you would get to a point where there's so much waste around that pipe there's only a very small little hole a pencil length uh, diameter size hole that the water can go through think about that with your intestines if you only have a really small little hole for waste to go through, you're in trouble. You're backing up. You're constipated chronically. And so that's a very, that's a very good point. So talking about that 40 pounds of waste, that 40 pounds was due to caked layers of encrusted mucus mixed with fecal matter, bizarrely resembling hardened blackish green truck tire rubber or an old piece of dried rawhide. I call this mucoid plaque. This mucoid plaque, when it is removed during an intensive colon cleanse, often shows rope-like twists, striations, overlaps, folds, creases, the shape and texture of the intestinal wall. But why is it that some people, medical professionals and doctors or biochemists and various people in that field in the formal field there why is it that they don't think that mucoid plaque exists so if we go on to our good friend Wikipedia and their definition is uh, a little bit more biased in a, a lot of stuff on Wikipedia you'll find is biased in the direction of medical establishment of the status quo so you always you want to use that filter when you're because they're always trying to overcorrect in the from the other direction so they're thinking that people with vested interest in trying to sell these products are always on the lookout trying to be vigilant uh, people in the Wikipedia community to, to, to stuff it 
but when people are uh, unfair and unobjective in the other direction there's often not a lot of voices that can stand that stand up to that so this says mucoid plaque or mucoid cap or rope is a pseudoscientific term used by some alternative medicine advocates to describe what is claimed to be a combination of harmful mucus-like material and food residue that they say coats the gastrointestinal tract of most people. The term was coined, and he said, it was coined by Richard Anderson, a naturopath and entrepreneur who sells a range of products that claim to cleanse the body. Many such colon cleansing products are promoted to the public on websites that have been described as making misleading medical claims. The presence of laxatives, bentonite clay, and fibrous thickening agents in some of these cleansing agents has led to suggestions that the products themselves produce the excreted matter regarded as the plaque. So for me, immediately, that's one of, that's the worst argument against mucoid plaque because I didn't use any herbs, no herbs, I didn't use any bentonite clay. I used absolutely no supplements in the early, the first 10, 11, 12 years of, for, of me practicing the mucus diet. I didn't start experimenting with and investigating and learning about herbology until I'd already practiced the mucus diet healing system for over 10 years. And the most major eliminations that I ever had on the mucus's diet was in those first three and four years of practice because once I had that black tar elimination that didn't happen again that's finite that was very very old nasty stuff that had been caked on there and had probably been in me since childhood since I was very young it's just as uneliminated, had never had the opportunity to leave my body. So it sat up in there and it turned black and feted and nasty. But that only, uh, once I had that elimination, it didn't happen again. Now I oh, would have various kinds of classic mucoid plaque eliminations over the years. And every once in a while I catch a picture of one. Here's a, a couple pictures of some things that came out. And, you know, mucoid plaque, then there's the question of well, what's a tapeworm, what's parasites, what's mucoid plaque. That could be discussed in a whole other video where we, maybe we could explore parasites and worms and that kind of stuff. But just in terms of mucoid plaque, whether you call it that or not, I tend to find it to be a very useful term. Now, just because some crusty doctor or some, they didn't come down from on high out of the you know out of the, the ivory castle of of medical ascendancy they they didn't gift us this term since the term was something created by someone outside of that sphere you know they do everything in their power to just you know throw it down belittle it crush it down talk mess about it Practicing physicians have dismissed the concept of mucoid plaque as a hoax and non-credible concept. Pathologist at the University of Texas School of, of Medicine addressed Anderson's claims directly, saying that he has, quote, seen several thousand intestinal biopsies and have never seen any mucoid plaque. This is a complete fabrication with no an anatomical basis. Another pathologist, Edward Fre Friedlander, noted that in his experience he has never observed anything resembling a toxic bowel uh, settlement and that some online photographs actually depict what is recognized as a blood clot. Uh, commenting on claims that waste material can adhere to the colon, Douglas Pleskow, a gastroenterologist, stated that is an urban legend in reality, most people clear their GI tract within three days. Whoo! <laughs> oh, oh, Doug, Mr. Douglas. So most people clear their GI tract in three days. Within three days. All right.
In review of websites promoting products that claim to remove mu mucoid plaque or plaque from the consumer's intestines, Howard uh, Hoster of New York University wrote that these websites are abundant, quasi-scientific, and unfortunately convincing to a biologically uneducated public. He noted that although such sites are entertaining, they are disturbing and that they promote a belief that has no basis in physiology. So, and it, it goes on, but the thing is, there, it's not, it's not balanced, but that's what happens on Wikipedia. There's, you could quote Anderson, you could quote uh, some of the nature of paths and put their words and their findings against the words and the arguments and the findings of the medical professionals and let people, when they read it, decide. So I read what Anderson said, and that quote could just as easily be there when it's because they, they don't even link to that. That should be there when they say that he coined the term. Well, then there, then then write that out. What did he say? If he coined the term, then what he wrote should be a part of an article like that. So. We have a lot of work to do in terms of those of us that is that are on this side of things and the natural health advocacy and research and interest. We have to really, uh, you know, we got to step our game up because even something like this, we got to start getting on to these public forums and do so objectively. And, and so we have to work on that, work to bring this information forward in an objective manner so that we can have our voices heard as well. Hey, our, our voice matters too. Nature of Paths voice matters. Now, natural health voices matter. So ladies and gentlemen, you be the judge. The thing is, when they talk about they have no evidence of that you find any of this when your intestines you know when you talk constipated up and you got all this uneliminated fecal matter that's that's sitting there all all of that is is going to be in there all the, the, the mucus and, the, and any of that stuff is just it's all going to be just one thing that they look at and said oh well this just didn't eliminate yet this person if they hadn't died, they would have had a bowel movement, and yeah, three days later, it would have, it all would have moved. But that's just not rational when you start really observing your eliminations in the way that we do. That's why we love that word elimination. We're always observing how is this, whatever we're putting in, how's it moving through? And if you learn how to eat broom salads, you learn how to eat fruit, you learn how to do enemas. You learn how to fast properly. When you put all of these things together synergistically, systematically, properly, that's when you start to see these kind of eliminations. When you clear out that just pounds of feces that's just sitting in your gut for no reason, you clear that out, it gives your body the opportunity to loosen up and get rid of that older nastier stuff that's, that's stuck on the walls that's in there so i love this we i have to show this colonoscopy video and you see look at the walls of this intestine look at this black slimy stuff and this is after doing a harsh purge using laxatives that i'm not a fan of but when you do a colonoscopy, you use these really harsh laxatives. After that, you see all this slime on the walls. That's not good. Does that look good to you? That black slime on there, does that look like that's supposed to be there? But what happens when you clean it out? And there's, granted, there's different methods to clean it out. We are talking about something that everybody can do. Because I'm not selling you herbs, I'm not selling you bentonite clay, I'm not selling you no, nothing, none of that. This is all stuff that you have access to 
information that you have access to and the resources that you have access to and so now's the time to take action and start cleaning yourself up imagine how much better you'll feel when you have an elimination like I talked about earlier when you get out that big old thing of black tar that comes out of you or these things of mucoid plaque and you can believe whatever you want to believe you don't have to believe that ex exists and you can just go on with your life and enjoy yourself Fun cool but if you want to transform your physiology you want to really take control of your own health then you want to investigate but the only way to investigate is you got to take action you got to start doing this so first and foremost get you mucus's diet healing system whether it's this edition or another one read it go through it take notes really look at the transition diet lessons understand the system of it all and then take action right now today you could go to the store go get some fresh fruits and vegetables come home make a big salad and eat that tonight instead of what you would have normally ate you don't have to wait you don't have to think about it start right now clean yourself up and again five free recipes are yours if you go down below click that link sign up you'll get the five free recipes as well as a few other little bonuses the menu planning that's that's invaluable just that because I haven't really talked a whole lot about the details of that on this channel and that's an important thing to understand how do you plan your menus and we give you an introduction to that all for free so go down below hit that link subscribe to the channel we're trying to come out I'm, I'm on it I'm trying to come out here and really hit you guys with some inf important information and content a lot of, as much value as I can I'm just trying to share trying to get all this information out here because it can help so many people we don't have to live the way we've been oriented to live and conditioned we've been conditioned to think that there's things that we can't heal that is genetic or it's the water it's this or it's that take control take responsibility for your own health and understand that it is gonna be work it is hard work it is discipline involved there is studying to do but you can do it how bad do you want to feel better how bad do you want to feel better how would you like to just wake up feeling good don't need no coffee don't need no alcohol don't need no weed don't need no pill wouldn't you feel free wouldn't that feel free freedom physiological liberation physiological liberation baby yeah <laughs> yeah baby <laughs> get yourself together that's what it's all about so I thank you so much for tuning in and until next time peace love and breath